percentage of people seeing chiropractors. How many chiropractors in the United States? Anybody know? I've heard anything, I've heard as low as 62 and as high as 75 or something like that. Do you realize that we don't have even one-tenth the amount of chiropractors in the United States right now if we tripled that 8.5%? So if we got to 25% of Americans seeing chiropractors, we'd have to build new schools like right now to start seeing people. CAPEX, I want to tell you about this and you take this over to the Hill. The way we did when we come up to, the, to um, Washington or when senators and congressmen would come to SEAL Team 6, back before everybody knew there was a SEAL Team 6, we did what's called a CAPEX. It's a capability exercise. Those senators and those congressmen want to know what you can do as a SEAL Team 6 member, as a, as a uh, chiropractor. So we've got to have our CAPEX down. Let me give you an example of how we did a CAPEX at SEAL Team 6 and got slotted to do missions we wanted to do. We'd have a senator come, sit in this chair. Our SEAL Team 6 commander would sit here, and then we put another, our team leader over here, okay? And then they would get up and walk away from the senator's talking there. They'd go get a target, put it right here, and it's got a big balloon on the head. I'm sitting out 500, mile, uh, 500 yards away. Congressman right here, Senator Sam Nunn, for one, is setting here and all of a sudden the balloon explodes. He's like, oh, you know, what the hell was that? Well, that was Petty Officer Was. And if you look through these binoculars, he's 500 yards out there and he just shot that balloon next to your head, okay? <laughs> Do you think that that man for one minute when he goes back to the Senate Appropriations Committee says, hey, those boys down at SEAL Team 6 are serious? If they tell you they can make a 500 yard headshot, you better bet your sweet behind they can make a 500 yard headshot. Another thing we would do, who remembers D.B. Cooper? D.B. Cooper robbed a bank, jumped out of a plane over the Pacific Northwest, never found D.B. They think they found some of the money. Point being, after that, they made all the aircraft put these special D.B. Cooper doors on. So what would we do? We fly up here to Andrews Air Force Base. We'd have congressmen, senators, Secretary of Defense, and it's on Saturday sometimes, so they bring their families. I've seen eight-year-old grandsons, I've seen nieces come and bring their girlfriends. They're making it a day with the family. So they get on board our DC-9, we get them up to 25,000 feet, we disengage the DB Cooper door and open it up. Imagine being at 25,000 feet, feeling that plane depressurized, the oxygen masks are dropping down, and we're sitting there in our parachutes going, hey, we're getting ready to jump out. And everybody's looking at you like that. So we would jump out, they would land the plane and we would meet them down on the ground when they landed and say, hey, here's how we insert. We can do this from 26,000 feet. We can fly our, our parachutes 40 miles, land on a target, which they just did in Mogadishu, Somalia, and rescued the hostages. And this is what we can do. You know why? Because that's our capex. This is what we're capable of doing. So as a community, especially when we're here, we better have our capability exercise down. We better put our money where our mouth is, we better put our techniques aside, we better put what we do as a community to the forefront and say this is what we can do. And until we do that as a society, our tactics will continue to fail. So let's get our CAPEX down. Tactical change, and that's what it all comes down to. We have got to change our tactics. If we didn't have to change our tactics, none of us would be sitting here right now. We have to change our tactics, and that means educating the public, no infighting, no us versus them, sticking to our, um, what we do best and not fighting other battles we shouldn't be fighting. So we got to do a tactical change and what we come back is finishing the job and I'll close it up here. We have got to finish the job. When the same number of people are seeing chiropractors now that we're seeing chiropractors when B.J. Palmer was alive, our tactics are not sound. If I brought my team back after an op, and I got somebody killed or injured, which I've done, so I'm not pointing the finger at anybody here about bad tactics, but you know what I did when I came back and one of my guys was hurt or killed? That didn't work, let's change it. It's a fool who keeps doing the same thing over and over and over and expecting a different result. I've trained the SWAT teams all over the world and the one thing I hate when I ask a question, why are you guys doing room issues this way? Well, it's the way we've always done it. Well, guess what? You might have been messing it up all this time. Let me show you a better way. So let's change our tactics and get our guys plenty of job security. Look at this. We got people graduating now, like I told you, that are, that are bartenders. 
if we had done a better job, if the chiropractic community had done a better job ed educating society, not doing our little political infighting, not putting up a wall and it's us versus them, these people be graduating like a medical doctor, expecting to go out there and make a good living. But we haven't done that, and I urge us to do it now. Injured military people alone should give you a good practice. Hopefully you'll educate them and they'll go tell everybody else, then you'll have a better practice. Play and practice as a team. Now here's where I take this off my little shoulders and put it on the ACA. The ACA is a good lobbying group. It's a good group of leaders. But what we've got to do is get all 75,000 people to be members of the ACA. When you've got 75,000 people shouting to that hill over there, they'll listen. And what's one thing they all want? And that congressman was candid earlier, and I appreciated that. They all want one thing, to get elected. They want to get reelected after that. So you've got to have a big voice shouting toward them. And if we had all 75,000 chiropractors in the United States doing that, our tactics would change. And I'll tell you now, anything I can ever do to help further that cause, please call on me. I'm changing tactics from my old team to my new team. And by doing that, I admitted to everybody earlier that I was just as proud being a chiropractor as I was a SEAL Team 6 sniper I am. I go to work every day, walk in, see my staff, put my hands on patients, and those of you who read the book know that I've had to step out of a room and cry before because I realized why I was spared. I realized why I had that survivor's guilt. When better men than me died in Mogadishu, Somalia, and I went for years going, God, why was I allowed to live when better men than me died? And on occasion, I see why. When if somebody walks out of my clinic feeling better, when somebody walks out of my clinic out of pain, when somebody walks back in and hugs me with tears in their eyes, and the way I feel every day when I go in there. So I urge all of you, let's stick to the tactics at hand, let's educate the public, and let's show them what a great gift we have as chiropractors. Thank you for your attention.